Hello friends, I asked you all for your questions on social media yesterday, on all of my social media channels, and here I am to answer all of your questions. You guys really delivered. I saw that there are quite a number of questions that came in. So I haven't looked at the questions yet, so I don't really know what they're about, but I do know that a lot of people oftentimes ask questions about gear. So I'm kind of unencumbered here. I'm in front of my shelves. I'm shooting nice and wide with a camera that actually is good for autofocus. So I'll be able to go back and show you stuff anyway feeling all unencumbered today in my studio. How nice, except for that I'm tethered to my sound recorder. So I have to carry that around anyway. So I opened up Facebook first. Let's see what your questions are. First one is from Ella. Ella says, uh, I listen to music while editing pictures, lyric -less, lyric less music, usually music from movies like Transformers or Narnia. Ooh, that sounds epic. Um, I would love to know if you listen to music while editing pictures. If you do listen to music, what do you listen to? And if not, may I ask why not? Of course you can ask. Um, I sometimes listen to music. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I have a movie on on the side. Sometimes I have nothing going on. Sometimes I'm just focused on the pictures. Um, yeah, it really depends on my on my mood too. Even within music, you know, I go through phases. So sometimes it's like, oh, I want to listen to classical. I want to be calm, and I want to like, I don't know, be feeling that way. Sometimes I've got Led Zeppelin going. I, it all depends. So I do like hearing what you listen to though, like stuff like from Transformers or Narnia. That's actually a really good idea. Like those epic movie soundtracks that, you know, the, the score, um, that's actually a really good idea. So I might, I might do that. Um, next question is from David. David says, how long before you see Nikon focusing again on top of the line ASPC DSLRs like a replacement for the D500? And then he says, I don't consider the D7200 in the same league for what I do with my cameras. Not everyone needs a full frame or a mirrorless. And for some, the type of camera and features offered in AD500 is what we really need. Will Nikon soon get back to ASPC cameras? Well, I mean, it sounds like you think that they're not focusing on the crop sensor cameras. And I don't know that I agree with that. Um, I think that, I mean, we've just had, like just today, I got the email from um, Nikon saying that they're about to do their announcement for their full frame mirrorless, but the D500 is still relatively new. And I mean, God, it is a fantastic body. I love my D500. Like, uh, let's grab it. <laughs> I love this thing so much. I use it a lot. Um, I do think it's a fantastic body and I am curious to see what's going to come of this. You know, how are they going to improve upon this? Um, I don't, you know, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't like have the inside skinny on with Nikon, but I kind of hope that where they're going next, I don't care if it's crop sensor, if it's full frame, if it's mirrorless, if it's DSLR, I don't really care the method that they're going to whatever goal it is that they have. I just hope that that goal is, um, you know, usability, flexibility, and personally, I just really want to see being able to use continuous autofocus during video. <laughs> I'm using a Canon DSLR right now to film this because I wanted to be able to, I wanted for it to track me around the, uh, the room. So yeah. So I guess to answer your question, I don't know. I don't think they're not focusing on crop sensor bodies, but I also don't really care. I don't care what it is that that they start focusing on. What I care about is what the result is. Yeah, because I agree with you. It doesn't really matter. You know, you don't think you need full frame. Well, you probably don't. I, I probably don't. Probably most people don't need full frame, you know, so I don't really care what. Yeah, I don't care what the method is. I just want to see. I want to continue to see um, cool stuff and a lot of flexibility. So, yeah. I hope that answers your question, David. Um, Bill says, have you ever thought about taking a small group of people on one or two of your Arizona excursions each year as a kind of learning and teaching trip? Could be different levels of skill, but would be so you could teach or pass along how you see things when out on a trip 
Choose the photos you take, knowledge of Grand Canyon and Arizona, et cetera, changeable, of course. Oh, well, that's interesting. I, um, okay. So yes, I have thought about doing like in-person like workshops or trips um, in particular to someplace like Sedona or the Grand Canyon. Um, logistics are difficult, um, but yeah, I have been thinking about that. It's something that I've talked to my members about before as like using them as a trial run type of a thing. Um, but let me ask you, Bill, and everybody else, is that something you'd be interested in? Because if it is something you'd be interested in, it is something that I will look into. But yeah, I think that would be interesting. And what you said in the later part of your um, comment there is interesting because I, I, I would definitely be obviously passing along, you know, what I do and how I look at things, but I actually think that it would change how I do things too. Like I would be learning from you all as well. So anyway, that's, that's an interesting question. On to Brian's question, which is I used mostly prime lenses on my Nikons. Used, do you not use Nikon anymore? <laughs> Most of them, oh wait, oh, I, I think that was a typo, sorry. Most of them are older manual focus lenses because I have been able to get them cheap. Are there any older manual focus lenses that you use on your DSLR because of their quality? Um, not really. I do have a couple of manual focus lenses. One of them is like an actual like manual focus lens. Oops, sorry. Had it out of, almost had it out of frame there. Um, it's this 50 millimeter Series E manual focus lens that, um, are we focused on that? It's a it's an old lens and i have used it before in fact i did a retro review of this lens i'll link that up above um, and it's just fun to use it's less of a quality thing for me and more of a shaking things up and shaking up how i do things the other lens i use is my uh, 105 millimeter prime lens it's a d lens an f 2.8 d lens um, it is actually an autofocus lens, but the autofocus doesn't work on it anymore. So I use it like a manual focus lens. And I do use this one um, because it's a macro lens. And um, yeah, I like the 105 millimeter focal length sometimes. So I use it like a manual lens. Again, I don't really use them because of quality, but I use them because they're less expensive. I got this one used um, and because it's fun. So yeah, there's that. Next question is from Polyus. If you had to choose one camera for the rest of your life, question mark, smiley face, winky face. Dude, that's a difficult question. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I guess, honestly, I don't care. I don't care what the camera would be. As long as it took pictures, I would try to embrace whatever it was. Now, of the cameras I have, I would say probably my D500 is probably the most flexible of everything. So I guess if I was gonna like, you know, hedge my bets, I would use that one and like, I don't know what lens, but, um, but yeah, honestly, I, I don't care what the camera is as long as I had a camera because I, I would just take pictures with whatever I had because I like taking pictures. The next question is from Greg. How do you clean your camera and what do you use on the camera body? What, how do I clean my camera? What do I use on the camera body? Um, I'm not going to talk about cleaning sensors because I have cleaned my own sensors, I do, but uh, it just makes me uncomfortable to even suggest that to anybody else because it's so dangerous and so touchy. Um, I did just purchase these lens wipes. Can you guys see these? Zeiss lens wipes. They're for like basically any lenses. Um, I just got these. I haven't even used one yet, but these I am planning to use like while I'm out and about and on the go. And then I also have to clean bodies. This little rocket blower. Jato? Jatos? I don't remember. If you search for rocket blower, you'll find it. Or I'll, I'll put a link to it down below. I really like this because it's super powerful. And I've seen other people like it too. Okay. Let's see. What's my next question? Um, Jan or Jan, I'm not sure. 
Um, either way, what are your thoughts on the coming FX mirrorless Nikon? You know what? I think I need to do a whole other video on that. I know I, I kind of have missed the boat on like the initial wave of reviews about, or not reviews, but like first impressions and, and such of that. And I really didn't think I was going to do a video about it, but I think I will because I do have a lot of thoughts on it. Basically, I'm looking forward to seeing what it's all about. I kind of mentioned earlier where I hope Nikon is going is continuous autofocus during video. <laughs> oh, I would really like that. Um, so I'll do a whole other video on that next week or by next week for sure. And then John asks, have you seen Levon Biss's work? Um, let, let me Google it real quick. I don't always know names. Levon Biss. LevonBiss.com. Let's see if that's it. Um, oh, insects, like super close up, super, um, super close up, like insects with black uh, backgrounds. I don't know if I've seen his work in particular, but I have seen work like that. Um, honestly, it kind of makes me uncomfortable. Like, I don't know if the bugs are dead. I assume they are. I don't know. I just, ugh. but like, whoa, amazing. Um, that's all for Facebook. Let's move on to Instagram. Hold on. I got to get there. <laughs> okay. Here we are. Ooh, 20, 20 comments. We've got number one. I'll try to keep these answers short. The toilet archer. Dude, what, a, what does that screen name mean? <laughs> um, what made you want to do photography? Such a serious question from such a silly name. <laughs> um, okay, what made me want to do photography? You know what? I don't know. I just always liked it. I guess, I guess no, I, I kind of know. Um, I have always loved photography. I had, I've mentioned this before, I had this bright yellow brick of a camera when I was a kid and man, I loved it. I didn't take very many pictures with it because I knew my parents wouldn't buy me film, but like I, the pictures I took, it was like, I thought I was an artist. I was like framing things up and like, oh, I loved it. And then, you know, fast forward, um, really just looking for a way to express myself because I love art. I love creating art and Photography just seemed to be the right fit for me. I, I've taken drawing classes. I've, you know, I've studied art history in college and yeah, I mean, I, I love to paint and stuff, but photography is really somehow that, I think it marries my, my love of the outdoors and my love of trying new things and experimentation and technology um, and my love of art. So yeah, it kind of brings everything together for me. Next question is from Dan in NY, D500 or Alpha 7 III? I have a D500, I don't have an Alpha 7 III, so for me, the D500. That being said, it's really gonna depend on the person. It just depends. If you're looking between the two, get your hands on them and see which one you like better, which one you like using better. You're gonna get good photos with both. The next one is from Jesse something. Jesse, <laughs> if you were to take the perfect photograph or as close to perfect as you could get, what would that look like? Hmm. You know, I, this is kind of like the camera question. I don't know what the photo would look like. I think for me, it would be more about the experience. Um, if I can go somewhere and, um, be, get up super early and have everything planned out and have my bag packed and, and get out somewhere and hike somewhere before sunrise and catch the sunrise somewhere and, and just that whole feeling, um, that's what it would be. Now, that being said, I do, have a, I do have one goal of being down at the bottom of the Grand Canyon for sunrise. It's something that has been a struggle for me because I have a diabetic cat and I have to give him shots at certain intervals. <laughs> so I haven't been able to do that um, without, I would need to get a pet sitter. But anyway, that's kind of one thing that I want to do right now. Uh, the next question is from Jurg, I think. Mm. What is your favorite painter and did he or she influence your photography? Oh, what a good question. Um, yes, I would say. I don't have one favorite painter. 
I love so many different um, artworks, so many painters, you know, I, th that's what I studied, so I love it. But I would say there, there's one that just comes to mind right away, and that is Caravaggio. He was an interesting fellow, but his work in light and, shall in light and shadow um, was intense. And it's something that definitely, you know, when I see it, I want to touch it. And it's kind of a similar feeling that I hope to achieve uh, for the viewers of my work. And also just that light and shadow, I, I just find it compelling. So yeah, I guess that is uh, one, one, one of the painters that influenced me. But like I said, there's like a million. Um, <laughs> and the next one is from... R. Gianelli one Hi, Rob. He says, I've been looking into the Canon M50. I want to downsize and get rid of my bulky Nikon DSLR. I don't care much about having 4K, 1080p is fine for what I need. Hey, me too. Um, just looking for something small and can give me good stills as well as video. Any thoughts? Um, I do have some thoughts. I have not used the M50. I cannot tell you like exactly. And honestly, I haven't done a lot, a ton of research into it. Um, what I have done a ton of research into is what I'm using right now, and that's the Canon Rebel SL2. Um, it is a great option, and I've been really happy with it, and I think that if you want the M50 because you want to downsize and all that, I say go for it. You might want to also look at the SL2, though. I don't know. An SL2 and, like, some primes. Or... I don't know, who knows? We, we might see something cool from Nikon next month. Mm. Um, next one is Egghead Travel Blog. Egghead Travel Blog, that's interesting. Do you prefer shooting in RAW or JPEG format? It depends. You know, in a perfect world, I would like to get my photo exactly how I want it in the camera. JPEG is fine, file size is smaller, and be good to go. But that doesn't always that's not always practical. So sometimes I shoot raw. Jay Milani says, I want to travel to Arizona in the spring. Please name five spots I must see and photograph. Oh my gosh. Okay, five. I don't know where you're going to be within Arizona and it's a large state. So I'm just gonna give you five places that are cool. Um, you'll have to be careful in the springtime because it does get hot in the central and southern Arizona region, but Okay, I mean, I have to say the Grand Canyon, right? So the Grand Canyon. Uh, the South Rim is the most popular during the spring. It's going to be very busy. I've never been to the North Rim, but I would love to go there. It's also very far, lots of drive time to get there. So, hmm. um, so that's one. Um, let's say in the central Arizona region where I am right now, I would say any of the any of the hikes around town are really cool. It's the desert, so, you know, it's awesome. Um, I really like the Santan Mountain Park region. I really like, oh gosh, there's, there's like a whole bunch of them. If you're gonna be in the Phoenix area, just let me know and I can tell you a whole bunch of hikes around here. So like some sort of hike in the central Phoenix, Arizona region. Um, also in the Phoenix area, the Heard Museum is incredible. It is, um, all Native American. It is a world-class museum and it's incredible. So that's three. Four, let me think of something in Southern Arizona region. Um, I spent, I've spent a lot of time in Tucson and there's, there's some cool stuff there. Lots of great food down there. And also like Saguaro Park is cool. Mount Lemmon is really neat. Um, yeah. And then the fifth one, the fifth one might be, go check out the train in Williams. That could actually be combined with your Grand Canyon trip because you can take the train from Williams to the Grand Canyon. Ooh, I spent a long time on that question. Snap Afloat says, Snap Afloat, hmm. when you are picking monthly themes, do you start knowing there are some photographs for that theme that you want to shoot or do you pick the theme and let the ideas flow from that? Both. Saved by Grace NH says, 
what is the proper way to handle large lenses? I know that you can't just let them hang unsupported off the lens mount, but how do you handle while shooting? This is a good question and I should grab a, I should grab a lens. Um, so something like my biggest lens, um, you know, a, a lot of different people are going to tell you different things for how you should hold a lens, um, how you should, you know, stand while you're holding the lens and shooting with the lens, but just, I'm not going to put it on a body. Just imagine. Um, I basically just hold on to it. If I'm using this lens, I actually have the um, the tripod mount turned around so that I can hold on to it even when the body's on it. Um, I might hold it like a baby with the body on it. I might hold it like a football with the body on it. I actually talk about that during my review of this lens. Um, or I might just kind of, you know, hold on to it like this with, you know, my hand on the, on the uh, camera body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Chick -chick. You know, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's a lot of different options for carrying these, you know, black rapid straps and all that stuff. I have not gotten into any of that because I just, I haven't found a need for it. I just am okay with holding it. I feel like with this big lens, it's going to be present no matter how I put a strap on it. So anyway, that for me is, you know, the way to handle it. Land Shark Namaste. Oh my God, your guys' names are awesome. <laughs> Hi, just purchased Canon mirrorless M50. Oh, you should talk to, oh, who was it that wanted the M50 before? I think that was on Facebook though. Hmm. Anyway, kind of nice for a price of $6.99. Know its limitations, 4K, just not 60 frames per second, small, light, etc. Here Nikon, etc. coming out soon, but in three to 4K. Just would like your thoughts, love and stuff. Thumbs up. Love and stuff to you too, Land Shark. Namaste. Um, I guess my thoughts on the M50, I kind of already have, have talked about. If it's working for you, good. It's the right camera. As for the new Nikon thing, I say thing because we like we don't even really know what you know i don't know what it's going to be yet i don't know what to call it the full frame mirrorless nikon announcement i don't know um like i said i'll do a whole video on that but my thoughts on one camera versus another it's just going to depend on you so there's not a camera on the market today that is not going to get you good photos if you practice with it if you know your stuff you're going to get good photos next Mike Sagara says, hi, Snapchick. Pondering on pre-ordering the Nikon P1000 for its super zoom range. I am concerned about the smaller sensor and image quality. I currently use a Nikon D50 with a 28 to 300 millimeter lens. Was thinking of ordering the massive 200 to 500 millimeter lens. What do you recommend? Honestly, I, I would just kind of, well, I, if it's me, I'd stick with what you have because that's what I have done. I have not pre-ordered the P1000. You, I've not used it either. I'm going to assume that you will notice a difference between the images from the two cameras, um, especially if you're one that wants to get in there and pixel peep. That being said, if you really want something smaller and lighter, go for it, you know, go for that kind of a thing, but set your expectations around it. You know what I mean? That being said, Oh my God, I love this 200 to 500. Obviously you have to lug it around, but I did use it on my full frame D810 on my last field trip. Or no, wait, no, I didn't. I used it for um, the review and yeah, it's great. So next, Steven says, hi, Snap Chicks. So after you shed your family and friends, no, after you something, your family and friends for help on your, poor, oh, ask maybe your family and friends for help on your portfolio for wedding and portraiture, where else can you find clients or add your services to? Okay, here's my biggest tip. Offer your services to a photographer. Offer to assist a photographer for free if you can. You will get referrals from that. So you help them out. I, By the way, when I used to assist for free, I ended up getting paid by them something anyway. Um, and, and then they ended up, um, you know, recommending me for smaller jobs that they didn't necessarily want. 
So then I was able to build my portfolio, word of mouth happens, and it works from there. The next one is MLS Chef. Moles Chef. Hmm. With the new lens mount announced by Nikon, are we about to see mirrorless cameras lead to a new level of quality in glass? Well, I don't know. Um, I guess what I can say, you know, like I said, I'm going to do a whole video on this, but I guess I hope that um, by, by quality in glass, I hope for better autofocus during video, and that will require different lenses that can be quieter, like these STM lenses that Canon has. Jackie says, how is your experience with the Fuji X100F? Is it better than Fuji X-E3 with 23 millimeter F2? I don't think it's better. I think it's different. It's what I chose. Um, I love it. <laughs> I have a review of it. You can see it up above. Adam Colvin Photo says, can I start charging without a business license until I get enough clients or make more money from my photography? Thanks. I would ask a business attorney in your region because every place is different in what they will allow for. I can tell you at the very beginning, I did not have like a business license, but I did always declare my earnings on my taxes because I just wanted to like make sure. Brad Byer123 says, what gave you the courage to make a major career move into photography? Was it an easy decision? Thanks. Oh my gosh, no. It was not an easy decision. And it wasn't like I one day just decided to quit my job and start doing photography. It was definitely, a, I was doing both for a long time. And in the very, I guess the last time I had an actual like non-photography job, it was, I worked in the region of finance and um, long story, someone questioned my professionalism, which is like, oh, don't do that <laughs> because that bugs me. And um, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make the leap. And it was really scary. I, I did, I already had Snapchat going. I was doing photography all the time. So it was kind of a, there was a lot of overlap. So yeah, it was really scary. And I actually really appreciate you saying that I was courageous. Next question is from Anthony Pisoferrato. Any travels outside the United States planned for this or next year? Nothing planned, but I always hope to travel somewhere, anywhere, far, near. So any suggestions? Getting close to the end, guys. Doubles Detailer says, what's the ultimate outdoor photo shot you have ever wanted to capture? Great white, sunset, climate change, our Milky Way, life, planet Earth from space. Oh my gosh. Well, the, you know, you, I started reading the question and I was like, oh, the Grand Canyon. But then you're like, planet Earth from space? <laughs> Mind blown. Um, oh, do people do that anymore? Did I just date myself and make myself look old? Um, anyway. I don't know. You know, there, there's so many things I would love to do. I don't know if I would have the courage, speaking of courage, previous question, uh, to like go up in a rocket ship. But I guess right now, I mean, you know, I, of course, you know, all those things would be cool. But right now, I want to go to the bottom of the Grand Canyon and hike down in the dark and be down at the bottom at sunrise and take pictures. That's what I want to do right now. Um, next question is from Jupiter FL photo best month to visit the Grand Canyon. Oh, lots of Grand Canyon talk. You all know me very well. Um, <laughs> the, the best month I like to visit during the winter, the very best when it's super snowy and you have to wear crampons and like, it's all very freezing cold, um, because it's the least busy and because it's just very peaceful there at that time. It's just you and the ravens a lot of the time. But other than that, I mean, spring and fall, you know, where it's warm but not hot are also nice times. It's beautiful. But I guess more than month, the best time is sunrise or sunset, no matter the month. And then my very last question today is from Defender Photography. Sorry, guys, reached my recording limit. I'm not sure exactly where it stopped, so I'm going to read that question again. From Defender Photography, 
I'm wanting to upgrade a, to a full frame camera. Would you recommend the D750 or the D810? Okay, so this is a good question because it's, you know, this camera or this camera, they're very similar, really. And they're going to be similarly useful and you're, you can get pretty much the same photos from both for all practical purposes. Um, your lens is gonna probably make more difference than whether you use the D750 or the D810. I've used both, but I own the D810. And that's because I like the control scheme of the D810 better than I like the control scheme of the D750. I try to have similar control schemes among the cameras that I use um, together, like for professional work, if I'm shooting a wedding, it would be nice to just have the D810 and the D500, which have very similar control schemes because it's just easy for me to switch back and forth. So I suggest getting them both into your hands, seeing which one you like to use better. And that's it. That is all of my questions for today, everyone. Thank you so much for watching, for sticking around. This was kind of a long video. You all asked such great questions. So thanks for asking for them. If you have any other questions for me, um, ask them. I'm around on social media all of the time. I try to answer all of the questions that I can. If I don't get to you, ask it again. <laughs> and that's it, everybody. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.